Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sure, like I am, many of you are thinking through and evaluating the whole conflict taking place right now between Israel and Hamas. And you are praying and you are sorting through what some of this means, both in the short term and long term. One of the things which I think really hit me hard this afternoon is how this is a conflict which has multiple components to it. Uh, we have to sort through just what is taking place in the natural, the political and the security dimensions of it, many of which go far beyond what we will be uh, discussing on this platform. They involve things which are sensitive and top secret and actually involve things that we may not even know about until this conflict is over and the dust settles. There are different prophecy aspects to this, what we think about the end times, our eschatology, Israel, what is to take place in the Middle East, the rise of the beast or lack thereof. Uh, those are things which we are certainly having to sort through as well. But there are also just theology components to this. How have different people from different theological schools or traditions responded? What do they think about Israel, the Jewish people, the state of Israel? Does it have a biblical right to exist or not? How many uh, people in the realm of theology have flushed themselves out as supporting supersessionism or replacement theology? The idea that the God of Israel is finished with Israel proper and that the church is some new Israel and that there really isn't a future millennium to look forward to where Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus, returns to planet Earth and reigns over a restored Israel from Jerusalem. So as I've been sorting through this, I'm sure uh, one of the questions which has been on your minds, it should be on your minds, especially as you may see a theological voice you have looked up to, you have respected, expose himself or herself as supporting replacement theology. What do we do with that question? Can we learn or still learn from people, from teachers who support replacement theology? Can you learn things about God and the Bible from theologians who are supersessionist? And as I have asked myself that question, anticipating that there are other people who are going to ask that question, the conclusion, the answer I have come to on uh, first consideration is, well, as Messianic men and women, can we learn anything from Jewish rabbis who have consciously rejected Yeshua as Messiah? I think collectively the answer of most people in the Messianic community is that, yes, we can learn some things from rabbis who consciously reject Yeshua as Messiah, it just depends on what the subject is. Uh, certainly, there are uh, things regarding Torah jurisprudence. Uh, there are things which are not directly related to our salvation, our redemption in Yeshua, that we can glean insight from because they concern the common human experience. And so, in a similar uh, vein, to answer the question, can we learn from theologians who support replacement theology the answer is yes, but it depends on what the subject is. We might not be looking to some of them for insight on Israel and the end times. Yet, some of these same people we would wholeheartedly agree with in terms of them supporting traditional marriage, one man, one woman, them standing against the LGBTQ plus agenda, uh, basic issues of human morality, ethics, uh, it all depends on what the subject is. And I think we need to be very careful and very guarded with that because this is a time when we sincerely hope that people who 
flush themselves out or expose themselves as supporting replacement theology, actually because of some of the circumstances on the ground, some of the protests taking place against Israel, some of the anti-Semitism blatantly that you see out there right now, we hope that the Lord will use this to get people who believe in replacement theology to repent of that and to uh, come to a position where they affirm that the God of Israel is not finished with Israel proper and that we are decisively on a Romans 9, 10, and 11 trajectory of salvation history. Once again, the answer to the question has to be, it depends on what the subject actually is, because that is precisely what we do as Messianics when it comes to Jewish rabbis who reject Yeshua. What are we investigating? What's the topic? We can learn, but that doesn't mean that we don't have to be aware of a teacher's limitations.